Happy New Year, everyone. It is good to be back. I know you came here today for some inspiration, and I have it for you in this video. It seems like just about all of our appliances broke in December, so we'll be getting some new appliances in today's video. We are going to undecorate the fastest you've ever seen me undecorate. Whoosh, we're done. And then we're going to reset for the new year. Now, I used to roll my eyes when people would say, new year, new me, but the only real way to have a new me or a new you is to leave the past behind and grow. And I'll give you three different ways of how you can do that while you're managing your mess and getting your house back in order for the new year. So let's get started. So I really hope that you all had a wonderful holiday season, a Merry Christmas, and a good New Year. I did start off New Year's with a cold, so if you hear my voice kind of crackle a little bit, it's because I'm still recovering from it. But if you're new here, welcome. I'm really glad to have you. My name is Michelle, and I create content that inspires you to make a change in real life messy situations. But let me go back a little bit to what we're doing here. So the day after Thanksgiving, Okay, you can imagine all the leftovers that we had. I probably took home like five or six boxes of leftovers from my mom's house. I went to heat up my leftovers from Thanksgiving and the heater or whatever in the microwave went out. So the microwave still turned on, it just didn't heat anything. So horrible timing for my microwave to go out. And you guys remember that our washing machine went out about two months ago and it doesn't end there, right? I think all my appliances start talking to each other and they're like, yep, it's time. Your turn next, your turn next. So then our dishwasher, it still works. Like it's hanging on by a thread, but sometimes it takes 12 hours for it from start to finish, for it to finish cleaning our dishes. And I'm like, okay, can, can, can things just stop going out here? And then like a few days before Christmas, our whole AC unit went out. And I'm just thinking, you know what? There's got to be light at the end of the tunnel. But anyway, for the microwave, uh, we were without a microwave for like three weeks because I couldn't figure out which one I wanted. So we went to Best Buy, we looked online for some, and then I found this LG. It says that it's smearless, and I will just kind of clarify it is not smudgeless that's what it says it's smudgeless the the end part is a little bit bent every appliance i buy does have some sort of bend in it but you know at this point it's in the back i don't care i'm not returning it i just want to have a working microwave so my handyman which happens to also be my husband chris is going to install this for us <laughs> All right, so what did you guys do over the holiday? Did you go skiing? Did you stay at home? Did you have family come in town? Did you go out of town? Give me all the juice. Let me know in the comments below. But we did have a really good Christmas. We stayed home. We hosted Christmas. And man, the kids were home for a long time. That was, you know, lots of sibling fighting. And I'm just glad that everyone's back at school and there's peace and quiet to get the house back together. Um, you'll may, you may notice here my uneven washer and dryer. And if you don't remember or know the whole story is that our washing machine went out and instead of, and we had kind of replaced some pieces in the dryer. So we've had the, the dryer, a repairman come and like 
replaced parts in the dryer a couple times, but everything in our house is about eight and a half years old appliance wise, because that's when we moved into this house. So I just said that I'm going to go ahead and buy the washing machine that day because you know, we needed a washing machine and then I would get the dryer around Black Friday if it went on sale. And then for the pedestals, I kept contemplating between getting like the pedestal that had a little washer or just getting storage pedestals. So whenever we went to buy the microwave, there was a there was some sort of a deal where if you bought two LG appliances and you got a percentage off. So I went ahead and bought the dryer and the you know microwave at the same time. So next we're going to install the dryer. I'm gonna deep clean the laundry room and then I am also going to put in the pedestals. Now I'm not gonna lie, you know, I'm grateful to have a working washer and dryer, but having these like uneven washer and dryer was kind of annoying. But the pedestals and raising it up, it does make such a big difference, at least to me. Uh, maybe because the space, you know, with the laundry baskets and everything, the space is so narrow that it just it just helps. Feeling so small, watch the clock ticking off the wall. But tonight I'm letting it go. Spend my coin for sure. I'm gonna be myself, or I could be someone else. No one's stopping me now. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I just wanna feel alive. Just what I do when I'm out, so try. All right, so let's talk a bit about 2024. So leave me a comment down below and let me know, how do you feel? Like, how do you feel starting off 2024? Do you feel energized? Do you feel like you're ready for something new? Do you feel refreshed or do you feel like burnt out? So just like, seriously, how are you doing? So as we all know, New Year is like the universal time to start fresh. Doesn't mean we can't do that throughout the year, but it almost seems like we now have permission to start fresh. But like, how do you actually do that? Do you just start by cleaning up your house and then hoping that your new year is going to start off great and fresh and new? Well, yes, you could definitely do that. That's what I'm doing here. But I think the first thing that is really going to jumpstart you is to set goals. Now, I know that sounds so obvious and sometimes it can sound even annoying to some people. Now, right after New Year's, I was at a friend's house and we started asking like, what is your goal? What, or what is your New Year's resolution? Do you have anything you want to accomplish in the new year? And mostly everyone said, I don't know. So why are goals really so important? because goals are what provide the motivation to do something. And studies show that only about 3% of people actually write down their goals. So about two years ago, I really, really took this serious. And last year, I even created, it's called the Goal Getter Guide. It's basically a template that I created to be able to track my goals. And this is different from anyone that I've ever seen before, because not only does it help you track your goals, but it also helps you overcome the obstacles that prevent you from reaching your goals. So I'm gonna share it with y'all down below. It's totally free. You just have to, it just asks for your email and then it'll be sent through your email, but it's, it's just a completely free guide that I created for myself and that you know I wanna share with all of you. It'll help you have more clarity in different areas of your life that you are setting goals for. Whether they are personal, family, or business goals, you can then backtrack on the things that you either need to start doing or maybe even stop doing to meet those goals. Goals also provide motivation. So like this whole cleaning community is about motivation, giving you the motivation to clean your space or organize your home. It all starts with goals. For example, I am not a naturally organized clean freak type person i struggle but there are goals and disciplines that i set for myself that give me the motivation to stay on top of it 
So how do you have a new you in the new year where the first thing is to set goals? And one of my first goals being hoping that I have enough strength to carry this dryer to the laundry room. But in all seriousness, we opted for the LG and I did get like two or three bruises <laughs> trying to get this carried. I kind of dropped it right there and then tried to reshuffle and figure this out. But we got it, we got it out, figured out. So we opted for the LG washer and dryer set with the pedestals it looks so much better than what we had before we originally had a samsung and i asked you guys what your favorite washing machine brand was when we were kind of on the hunt but we opted for the lg the sales guy told us the lgs were the best but from y'all's recommendation i also got the whirlpool and speed queen i think those were the top three lg speed speed queen and whirlpool were all highly recommended so i have no complaints i really like them and hopefully they last me a long time but i did end up getting just two of the storage pedestals instead of the one with the little washer and dryer under it and i'm going to go ahead and switch and reorganize all of these pedestals next All right, the next thing or tip on how to create a new you for the new year is to let go of your past. So I went to a couple different church services where they kept talking about letting go of your past. And when I kept thinking about it, I'm like, my past isn't really stopping me from doing anything. I don't feel like that's what's holding me back on anything. So I don't know how this really applies to me. And then I sat down and thought about it. So I, I don't have any complaints, but we have a couple big decisions to make this year. And I, I'll tell you guys about it later, but I just feel like the one thing that is stopping me from making a decision to kind of move forward is fear. And when I really sat back and thought about it, the fear is coming from my past. So let's just think about this for a second. So if you are setting goals for 2024, which could be something like get your house back in order, declutter your home, you know, pick spaces to make more organized. A big one is to get back in shape or eat healthier, or maybe it's to budget. There's probably a good chance that you've tried doing some of this before and have not been successful. So what happens is you go into the, I've tried this and I've tried it this and I've tried this and it just doesn't work for me. So now all of these past experiences causes fear for you to not move towards your goals. This is why letting go of your past is so important because it's like a roadblock to growth and new opportunity. Now, one of the biggest things that I've learned in 2023 from reorganizing my spaces to hitting my income goals and my health goals and my YouTube goals is between all of the hate comments and all of the obstacles, the failures, the spaces I've had to redo, the messes that were made, is that I take it as an experience, a positive learning opportunity, and I keep moving forward. So here is your permission to let all that go. We used to hang around town pretty late. 
I spent the week thinking about our next day It was easier than So much easier than Oh, like that time I picked you up outside of school You said, screw my dad, I make my own rules It was easier than So much easier than Take me back to the Take me back to those easy summer days When we stopped at nothing, baby Yeah, we stopped at nothing, baby They couldn't take us They couldn't change us They couldn't catch us if they tried Now we didn't care at all About winter or spring or fall We felt so alive and girl, we were thriving on kisses and sunshine and mischief Yeah, we had one of those things uh, We just had one of those things Ooh. I guess I've had some things to figure out But now that I'm done, I'm full of doubt Was it easy for you? Yeah, was it too easy for you? You used to say that you would always be mine But you seem to be doing just fine Now I think about you I just can't seem to stop thinking about you Take me back to the Take me back to those easy summer days When we stopped at nothing, babe Yeah, we stopped at nothing, baby they couldn't change us They couldn't catch us if they tried Now we didn't care at all About winter or spring or fall We felt so alive and girl we were thriving On kisses and sunshine and mischief Yeah we had one of those things Now I have Christmas taken down And okay there seems to be controversy about when to take down Christmas decorations just like there is and when to put up Christmas decorations and I will say that in the last like two years um, I did start taking down Christmas the day after Christmas um, opposed to after New Year now if you've seen any of my Christmas decorating videos you know that I go all out and I I kid you not when I say it takes me like at least three weeks, not like consistently every day, but three weeks to almost a month to put up all of my decorations. That includes inside and outside. And I have three kids, so it's like, it's not like I can do it all at once. And then keep in mind like the planning and the filming and all the extra stuff that goes into it also takes a lot of time. So, so I started this year on... The last week of October, I know that's not normal for most people, but when you are creating content around it, you know, you have to get up videos a little bit earlier than what like you would if you didn't create content on it. But um, I started my dining room like the last weekend of October. So yes, by Christmas or the day after Christmas, I'm ready to get it down. Not because like I want to look at it. I don't want to take it down, but I know how much work it is. So I want the work to be behind me, if that makes any sense. And that's also when I have the most free time to do it. Now, within that, I also started a new outdoor project. So that video is coming up. We added wood paneling to the ceiling of our patio. Our patio is going to look amazing. So we have that project going on the same time I'm cleaning up this area. So like whenever it goes to the back patio windows, you'll see Chris working outside. But I also want a lot of the kitchen clutter gone. So one of my goals is to like open and empty up the space in the kitchen a little bit. Um, one way we did that is I did get Chris a new coffee machine for Christmas. So before we had two separate machines, he loved the Keurig and I loved the Nespresso. So we had two big old machines on the counter and, um, we ended up just getting one, one coffee machine and got rid of both of our machines. So that clears up a bit of space, a bit of, a bit of the space here. Gosh, I can't talk. But our house does feel super empty. I don't know. Does anyone else feel that way? Um, maybe because like from beginning of spring, like Easter time is when I start adding 
home decor, um, seasonal decor, and then it goes all the way through Christmas. You know, as the seasons change, I just change up the decor. And then these couple of months are the months where it's the most bare. Now, I was thinking of adding some wintry decorations. I want to add maybe some blue, but I don't know if I'm going to do that or if I'm just going to keep it to a bare minimum and then use this time to do a lot of decluttering. Now, I will spill one secret. During the break, we started looking at new houses, but I don't know. I don't know if it feels aligned. Um, we're just really going back and forth on what, you know, big changes we're going to do this year, and we don't know if it's going to be that or if we're going to wait. So um, I don't know. I just, I don't know. But when I find out, I will, I'll let y'all know. Now we do love this house. We built it from the ground up eight and a half, almost nine years ago. Um, the only thing is that the space is, it's enough space, but it's not functional space uh, the way that I want it. Like we don't have a good eating area, right? I have a little kid's table in the middle of our living room where the kids eat. Our dining room is my office. Our office is like a junk room. I mean, could we make it all work and reconfigure it? Absolutely. But it's just, I don't know. There's certain things that I like specifically, like I'm particular about, is like having an office in the front of the house by the front window. Like that is something I'm, I'm particular about. And what I, that's why our dining room is our office. And like all of these spaces are not super functional, but we're making it work. So we just don't know yet what our future looks like. Now, with that being said, um, now that like, moving is kind of in our our brains I guess you can say is in the works so if it's not now maybe it'll be in the next year is that I do want to focus this year on more decluttering um, fixing the house up or just finishing the projects that we have like our closet our outdoor space and then um, just getting it ready a couple hours from just touch of who I am when you're far away and I feel like I'm running in circles around you mm. and I know I've been acting strange for a while but I want you close All right, so continuing on how to create a new you in the new year after you have first set your goals, use my goal getter guide, please. Or if you don't use it, then at least write down your goals and how you're going to accomplish them. Step two is letting go. Letting go of the fears that you have that are holding you back from going and getting your new goals. And lastly, step three, do something new this year. And what I mean by new is do something new that is going to challenge you, that steps out of your comfort zone, that creates growth. Now, could that be going and finding a new restaurant to eat at? Well, if you're like a super picky eater and you don't ever eat anything, and going and trying a new restaurant and trying different types of food has been very scary for you but you're finally open to trying it then yes if you're like me where you'll eat anything and going and eating new food is more like a luxury than a challenge then try something different maybe instead of budgeting for a new purse or a new pair of shoes budget for a new experience go somewhere you've never been been before maybe it's decluttering more now i've opened up about it being hard for me to declutter i don't know why i have like personal attachment to things so it's hard for me to like let go of things but one of my goals is to make it more easy for me to declutter maybe it's finally starting a side business and earning an extra income like you've always wanted to i know when i started my channel three and a half years ago i was so scared it pushed me out of my comfort zone but it opened my eyes 
to endless possibilities and so many opportunities. I know I said not to look back, but when I do look back at myself, I everything I'm doing now, three years ago, I said was not possible for me. It just, th those types of things don't happen to people like me. I would say things like, I have no time, I have no experience, I am busy, I don't know what I'm doing. But I just had to let all of that go and actually do it. One of my other goals for 2024 is to help more on a personal level, which is one of the things I launched last year was the YouTube Power Kit. This kit includes the seven steps to getting started on YouTube if you feel like you've always wanted to share your passion, share your business, share what you've always wanted to through YouTube and make an income by doing it. So you can download that free guide below in my links below. And later this month, I'm launching the YouTube Power Program, which is a course designed to teach you how to create a YouTube channel, differentiate yourself on YouTube and make money through YouTube so that you can leave all the old stuff behind and create the life you want on your own time. And this isn't someone else teaching the course for me. This is me capping it off. So there's not going to be hundreds of people in this group. It's going to be a small group coaching sessions directly through me and a course that I've worked on so hard to give you all the information that I've learned and experienced throughout the years. So more information on that is in my description box below. But definitely the third and final thing is to try something new that's going to push you out of your comfort zone because you're not going to grow unless you get uncomfortable. And think about the times where you've made the biggest growth in your life, whether you've wanted to or not, were through the difficult times and the uncomfortable times. So I challenge you to purposely take on something uncomfortable and challenge yourself this year. Let me feel your love again Cause I've been running round in circles Screaming out your name Take me to a different place the two of us and we can stay up all night kissing under street lights doing what we want to doing what we need to do staying up all night everything is all right oh i want to be with you oh i want to be with you let me be the sun So once all of the Christmas decorations were put away, I saved the big tree for last. She stayed with us until my birthday, probably. My birthday is December 28th, so it's like just the most awkward time of year to have a birthday. So shout out to all the December birthdays, but I usually spend my birthday putting away this tree and then I go to dinner with my family. 
We usually go to Taste of Texas. So if you're from Houston, you know that steakhouse, but there was a three hour wait. They don't really take reservations unless I'm mistaking. You just have to like go and get in line. So we had to improvise and go to a different restaurant, which it was all still great. Bad thing about having your birthday like during this time is that the weekend before is like Christmas time and the weekend after is New Year's time. So for me, I am very particular about having it be exactly on that day. Yes, I could celebrate it out like far out, but it doesn't feel right. So um, yeah, I it's just dinner on that day. But I'm lucky to have a husband and a bunch of kids who have really good birthday months all like close to summer because there's so much to do in the summertime outside which i think summer is actually my favorite season i know i may have said another season but i think it's summer because i just like being outside and by the water which leads me to ask are you more of a summer person or a like cooler climate person um by the mountains or by the beach? Let me know in the comments below. Now, I do remember when I I was so mad taking apart this couch. I was so angry. I was so mad. I just wanted it to be back together. And the more mad I got, the more and more this couch did not come apart. It's funny how that happens when you're mad. The worse it gets. So I called Chris to come help me put this couch back together. But we have to move it back so that we can fit the Christmas tree in that spot. And then... Whenever, you know, we take the tree down, then we move it closer toward the TV. So I'm gonna get this living room put back together. I'm staring through your window, looking up at the stars, up at the stars. I'm caught inside a loop where I can get to your heart. Thank you guys so much for joining me on my first video of the new year. I hope that you got something out of it. If you're new and you felt like you want to see more, please hit that subscribe button and I will see all of y'all next week.